Welcome to another roundup of news in this uh, episode of the, it's not a quest, it's a journey to Blender 2.8. So we're still in alpha, but things have been changing. Uh, this week is being uh, focused also on getting more stable. There has been a call for workspaces and there has been some changes in the interface, this controversial topic that everybody loves. Who doesn't love UI? discussions. Um, one of them, uh, one of the big changes that happened this week was uh, in the header, they were in the, in the header and in the viewport itself of the Blender UI. So let's, let's go through some of them. Uh, there is, uh, is a mix of new features, uh, fixes, and then changes and organization. So where to start? Well, uh, I don't know if you noticed in the last video that I made uh, that I didn't mention it, but it was there. It's the flip of the shading settings viewport slash everything that has to do with your view like overlays with the snapping and uh, the um, pivot point like everything that it on every other editor is on the right in the viewport now it's in the center and it yes it's a it's, it's a change but that means that the shading settings, the popovers and everything is no longer in the middle of the, <laughs> of the screen. So it would happen that uh, if you open an overlay panel or like a popover, it will just like boom, put it in the middle of the screen and then it will hide all the, the <laughs> whatever you're doing. So if you change a matcap, then it would just, you wouldn't see the results. So that's uh, one big change that happened this uh, week, there's also changes and additions in regards of how to work with your scene, how to like actually um, work in the, in, in the viewport, hiding things and making some certain object types selectable. So for example, let's see this uh, file from Spring Open Movie. Say I want to hide all the cameras. How would you do it? Well, you could select the cameras and you can hide it from the outliner, but now you can also uh, hide by type. So in the header, which works much better if you're in scene the top, you can uh, hide now per type or you can also make unselectable. So you click this working progress icon that is here, that it's a very special uh, mix of uh, icons here. What does it mean? Well, it has an eye and it has a cursor. It means that um, if it both are on, this will be worked on, but both are on, it means that everything is visible and everything is selectable. So we said we I wanted to hide the cameras. Okay, I just click on cameras. And now I don't see the cameras. And if you see the, the well, the icon is hard to, hard to see. Let's go up here. Uh, let's make the UI slightly bigger. So the, uh, the eye icon now is gone. So it means that something has changed. Um, then I can also hide the, the armatures or like very it's per, per type. So you can see um, only the things that you want. And it's very, very nice. It was there last week. It was tucked in a um, sub panel right here because it was, it, it, like it, it was here in the header for like a day and it had the same icon so you couldn't tell like it was always it was an eye in the middle and you couldn't you couldn't tell the state of what was happening in this sub panel so it didn't have a lot of sense it had a functionality but it could be better so now it's brought back in the viewport with this extra functionality so at a glance if you open this file um, somebody sent you this file, for example, and you open it and you see, oh, okay, the eye is there, and, but the little arrow is not. Um, then it means that some things are not selectable. So if you're clicking around and nothing is, you can't select it, then you just have a look here and then you see it. And it works for all kinds of uh, combinations. So uh, yeah, the icon, we need new icons for these guys. So uh, let, let's, let's think of ideas how to make it nicer. Right now it's just basically the both icons very small. So this is one big thing that happened uh, regarding hiding things in the viewport. Um, there is this overlays uh, popover that was introduced way some months ago and uh, you could toggle on or off everything basically this, with this button here. So it will just like, yeah, and it will even gray out the popover, but there was something that was uh, not possible. So here, for example, you hide everything, but 
in uh, the popover itself, even if you click and try and hide everything, then uh, you will still see some objects, certain elements in the viewport. So that was not fair. If you unhide or hide, it should just like be the same, right? If you click, turn everything off here, it should be the same as clicking here. Um, there were a few exceptions, so now those are added as new features, basically. So which ones were the exception, the origins? There was no way in Blender until a few days ago to hide the, um, let's see everything. So let's see, for example, select an object and let's only see the origins. So there was no way in Blender to hide this little thing in here or like when you add a new mesh. This thing that is usually in the center that is useful to see where the origin of the object is. It's not always the center itself, it's just the origin where, where it was added. So um, there was no way to hide it, now there is. And uh, the only option that was there before it was where you could just um, show all of the origins, but yeah, it was a bit distracting. Now you can, you can hide it. That's for the first time in ever since Blender was born. <laughs> so that's a big change. Um, then there is also another change that was added that you can hide individual bones. So it means, what does it mean? Why don't just hiding the whole armature? Well, it means that you can um, have like um, motion pads on, but the bones off. So it's a nice mix. You can just show a few things that you that you want or not. Then another thing that was added is ornaments. What is an ornament? Well, it's every object that doesn't have a, it's like a, like the camera, for example, or the, the lamp widgets around it. And um, it's everything that it's a wire that doesn't get rendered basically. So if it's a mesh, yes, it's going to show, but everything that is like a decoration to the object, like this, um, that these wires here that are actually cameras and they don't get rendered, well, those are ornaments. So that also wasn't possible before. You couldn't, you couldn't hide it. You could hide everything or nothing. So that's another extra addition that you can do. That's pretty nice. Then um, the grid also was, um, was tweaked. But the one I want to show is the manipulators because now you can hide before you could just either show or hide everything, all kinds of manipulators. Now you can toggle which ones you want. So the first one is a navigate manipulator, which is these arrows that you find here in the, um, in the corner for navigation that is still a work in progress. Don't talk about the design. We know, we know. But uh, now you can toggle off. And the cool thing is that you can toggle it off also Per, um, per viewport. So let's, I have the wrong, there you go. So now you can have it on and off per viewport. Before you could only do it from the user pref. You could change it from there. So now what you do from the user prefs is to toggle between the simple or the other one if you're more advanced. For example, this one, interactive navigation. Some people say that it's for beginners. I don't think it's for beginners only. If you're working on a tablet, for example, it's very handy to just click there and you don't need like to go to the to the keyboard all the time. So you just click there and uh, it's fast if you're with a, with a pen, with a stylus. Um, but also just to see where, where you are. When, when it's a bit prettier in the end and a bit smaller, it's gonna be uh, much more handy. But the fact that you can now have it per viewport, that's, uh, that's a plus, it wasn't possible before. So then there's also two kinds of manipulators, the active object and the active tools. So there are a few tools that have a um, manipulators. For example, the transform is one of them, the most obvious one, but the, uh, for the spin tool or the, there is still is a work in progress, all of them, these manipulators, uh, but you can toggle them on or off from here. And then there is active object. What is active object? Well, it's the manipulators that only um, affect that one object. So for example, if I'm, let's, let's go to the camera. So if I select the camera, you would see that the camera has this yellow um, control. It's like a manipulator to change the zoom, for example. The spotlight also has this line where you can control the, the cone size. 
Well, um, that is what it means with a manipulator for the active object. So if you disable it, then you can um, you can be in the camera and it's not gonna show up. If I enable it, now I have it here on the side. It's hard to see here because there are so many lines, but yeah, those are the manipulators. And um, that's, that's it. There, there has been a lot of uh, arrangement changes here. Uh, the 3D cursor was already there, but uh, this XYZ didn't say access before. Uh, so you wouldn't, I mean, you could, it was next to grid, so you could maybe imagine, but yeah. Um, that's something that changed. Um, the outline, everything else is pretty much there. Then the, um, this UI changed a little bit. What you see here actually are sub panels. So sub panels are supported already in Blender, like in, in the popovers, but they don't look like pop or when, like sub panels. What do I mean with a sub panel? Well, as a panel, for example, it's something like this, something you can collapse. And uh, for the time being, they're not, it's not implemented yet, but they are going to look like that and you're gonna be able to collapse them by default. And there won't be like a football field size gap between these two. They will be much smaller, so they will be, um, it's gonna be more compact. Now it looks too big, but yes, it's gonna be compact once the implementation for pop for sub-panel popovers is complete. Uh, for the time being, you can uh, disable some of them, they get expanded, um, like motion tracking, I think for by default is gonna be off because it's something that uh, like not everybody uses and maybe it can show. So it's just to make it, maybe it will show by default in the motion tracking workspace. So these are things that we need to still discuss, but basically to just show what is relevant to you and what when you're doing it. So that is with the overlay. So now, finally, you can just click on everything and it will be the same as toggling it on or off, something we wasn't possible before. Next, the shading. Um, the shading panel has a few fixes, but not, um, not a huge deal. Basically, it's just alignment of the, um, of the, of the panel itself, of the popover, and this hasn't changed much. It's now much smaller. So now you can see more and it won't block your screen. Um, before this used to be way bigger, like twice as big and it will be like using all the room. I should have pictures how it was before, it was really huge. And the matcaps is not something that you change all the time because you usually know them, you remember them. Um, so you, uh, if you wanna see them big, you just go with the user pref icon here and you see them big where you can make your own. So that's something that was uh, changed. The alignment was, uh, I added, just did it just now uh, we, based on a discussion on the development dev talk forums. Thank you for that. Thank you for providing feedback. And um, yes, lots of uh, changes. The, the interface is a bit different here, but all not only that, but there's also additions. For example, shadows. I'm not gonna try it on this file because I know that it's gonna, <laughs> be slow and I don't wanna risk this one take long video with uh, something crashing. So shadows, you know what shadows are? Click, I click on them and they're like basically geometry. They're very sharp and they're based on like geometry. You can uh, change the intensity and you can move them around. But not a lot of people knew that because they was kind of hidden in the scene properties. So you have to go to scene and then here you will um, find the panel. Not anymore. Now this is, well, it made sense actually that it was there because it's a scene setting, but like to change the direction, you really do it from the viewport. So now uh, when you have a shadow here selected, you can click on this uh, popover and you can just move the direction of the shadow around, which is pretty nice. And there is another property for the, um, for the shift which you can see better when there is like an object that it's um, curved and at a certain angle, you're gonna see it, see it change. It's very, very subtle, but basically it's, it based on the, um, it, it can fix some artifacts on the shadows. So just play with it if you need it, but the light direction is the one that you're gonna play with the most. The, um, the shift is not something you're gonna change all the time, only if you see errors. And also with that concept, there is the cavity shader settings that before also were tucked in the scene property settings. Now they have their own little popover here where you can change the 
distance, attenuation, and uh, quality or samples. So that's another improvement. Um, this also the UI kind of jumps here. Maybe we can fix it once we have the sub panel, but the, the collapsible sub panels, we can uh, align a few things a bit better. Um, maybe um, in the development talk forum, there was a, a suggestion to make this column. That's where I took it. That's where I, that where I found this idea. It's very nice. And to apply the same here, so they're all nicely aligned. Um, but yeah, this concept is also shared here. So now when you um, choose an HDR, you can also change the rotation and it's all nicely aligned. But it took me like an hour of just moving things around and just trying, trying, trying. So yeah, it's not, a, it's not easy, it's not easy, but it's worth it, it's fun. So um, that is it for today. I think uh, it ended up being much <laughs> longer than I wanted, but yes, Blender 2.8 continues to grow. There are more fixes. It should be more stable right now. There has been fixes all over the place. The people here, the artists working on Spring, they have been fixing modifiers, shrink wrap modifiers fixed. There were some rigid stuff. I don't know, all over the place. We keep using Blender 2.8 every day to make spring up a movie project. So we are like fixing things all the time. And remember that you can still submit fixes for the, um, uh, sorry, fixes, back reports, but not back reports, but crash reports. So yes, remember that all of this is possible thanks to the development fund. So yeah, advertisement. <laughs> This is thanks to Squares, no, no, Development Fund. That is it, where you can join. And we're working on a new version of the Development Fund where uh, you will be a bit more fancy. So stay tuned for that. And uh, that is it. I will see you again in the next video. Ciao, and thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want more and like, and yeah, ciao.